Good morning, good evening, or whatever time it is that you happen to be watching this video. Um, lords and ladies, we're going to be making some European 4-in-1 chainmail using the speed weave technique. And I'm Damien and I'm going to be your mailer. Not to be confused with the guy that brings you letters, but the guy that makes armor. <laughs> so most people use these bent nose chain mail pliers. They have these kind of thin handles. They're really actually very nice for doing very small rings um, and delicate work. But if you want something that's more comfortable, I highly suggest these Wubbers. They have a much fatter handle, much nicer, much comfortable. Just work beautifully. And when you're twisting rings for hours, it, these smaller ones have a tendency to dig into your hands right through here, where these with these wider handles don't. Much nicer. So first we're gonna start with some anodized aluminum jump rings and some green O-rings. And we're gonna take one anodized ring that's open and we're gonna put four of these O-rings on there. Hence the name four in one. I'm gonna close that up. Now I like to over bend mine a little bit, and then as you can kind of see, there's still a little gap there. Kind of bring it back with your thumbnail and then push it because aluminum's super soft and it makes a nice tight closure. Next, I'm gonna separate those out. And if you watch other videos, they'll show you that. If you lay these down, it starts the four in one pattern like this. And some of the videos will tell you to make a whole bunch of these little guys and then connect them all together. But we're gonna kind of skip that. We're gonna take these, I'm gonna put an open ring and then two O rings on top. Close that bad boy up. Once again, a little bit overbent, and then push it back so you get a nice tight closure. I'm going to repeat this step several times until you get it to the length of the whatever you're making, or however long you need to make it. Also like to put a little plug in for some tool magic. That's the white stuff on the tip of my pliers here. Kind of see some of this stuff. Just dip your tools in that and it helps immensely when you're using the working with the anodized aluminum so you don't scratch it because it's very soft. Like I was saying, super easy. Keep making this chain two and one, two and one. Also like to point out that a lot of the videos that I've seen, you guys are using square nose chain pliers. I personally like the bent nose for the simple fact that you don't end up doing the chicken wing and your hands are much more comfortable allows you to sit longer, be comfortable doing it, so you're not holding your arms out. And also having the bent allows you to see what you're working on. So now for this particular project, <clears throat> we're gonna end up with something like this when all is said and done. But for right now, we've got this. And we're gonna want it to be this long got this prepped up beforehand. And when you do it this way, especially with the rubber rings, the length that you measure, if you're making a bracelet, you wanna make it a little bit longer because when you start connecting them all together to make the actual chainmail pattern, it shrinks up on you. So you usually you add at least one extra link. But so there's that. So now we have two of these we're gonna connect these together and make the actual chain mail. 
one thing with the rubber rings that are kind of sticky. I like to stick. We don't want to slide on top of each other. You're going to line up your strings just like that. Then you're going to take one of your open rings. Now, try and keep your angle good on here. And you got to feed this just the same way these two rings are sitting. Yeah, these two rings. If you look closely, there's a little hole right here. Just kind of push that down through the hole. Kind of curves up through the others. For me, I always see kind of a flower when you have it laying right. You can see your two inner rings here and the other two rings, they just, I don't know, looks flowery to me. You can see those two rings, they just kind of sandwich on top of each other. I'm gonna close that ring up. back down. Even with that first one, you can really see the chainmail pattern starting to form. Turn that out there. Like I said, with the O-rings, they're kind of sticky. They don't like to slide on top of each other. So once again, you're going to repeat, just going to go down through this top ring, gonna hook underneath the bottom ring, come up through that ring, and then Once again, you can kind of see how they just kind of sandwich on top of each other. Two in the middle and two on the outside. Close that guy up. Now at this point, you got a little chain actually starting. It's going to hold its shape a lot better. You can actually just kind of drape this over your finger, which actually opens it up, makes it a lot easier to slide in your next rings. It's like manly knitting. And if you happen to make a mistake and it goes through the wrong ring at the wrong angle, which will happen many, many times, Try not to get too frustrated with it all, but it's usually pretty easy to notice right away. And it's better if you just fix it right then than trying to leave it and come back. Most of the time you'll forget about it and you wonder why your chainmail isn't laying flat. <laughs> so, my O-rings weren't laying the way they were supposed to, and actually this top one got mildly twisted. And so, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got these two rings here ended up getting twisted around. That's why it's not laying flat. So we gotta backtrack a little bit. Like I said, many mistakes. But the pattern itself will definitely show you your mistakes.
got it laying flat again. All the O-rings facing the right direction. All the aluminum facing the right direction. Squeeze it up underneath there. I do have to say, when you're using all metal, this works a little bit easier also, because the O-rings are, they're tacky. They don't want to slide amongst themselves. Another thing that I prefer these bent nose over the other pliers too is that when you're opening and closing your rings you really want to try to keep your movement like your twist at a, a 90 degree angle and oh, well, look at that, I missed one <laughs> when you use the flat chain nose you have a tendency to pull the ring apart and instead of a twist. When you pull your ring apart, you, you ovalize the ring instead of keeping it round, which in the long run, make your stuff look poopy. Because things won't lay flat and symmetrical. And another thing, when you're buying rings, you definitely want to look for stuff that's what they call saw cut. That's what I'm using here. Um, when you wear saw cut, it's much nicer on your skin. It doesn't catch your hairs. Whereas stuff that's been machine cut or cut by hand leaves a little burr at the end of every ring. So when it rubs up against you, catches your little hairs, it can be quite uncomfortable sometimes, especially if you're a hairy person like myself. Looks like one more. There's half. Lay it out like this just to make sure. See, look at that. I missed an O ring there. Horrible work. Easy to see once you know you're, what you're looking for and the pattern is very prevalent. High contrast in colors such as these make it even easier. Alrighty, so we have that half. We've already prepped up this other half. So now we're gonna hook these two together. I don't know if it's gonna come out like that. One more. So, we have a bunch of these prepped up. It's always good to have your open rings closed rings but we're all done with all the closed o-rings so we got our open rings and we're now going to connect these two halves together and just like we did the two single strands start I know it's hard to see because my hands in the way Whoa. And the ends are always the difficult spot to get. Once the pattern started, it's always a lot easier. 
holds its shape. Someone's going home with a fat bracelet. <laughs> close it. And like I was saying before, when you close, it's good to push it just a little bit past its point there and bring it back so it actually helps hold the ring closed and flush. Once again, so it doesn't catch your little hairs on your body. So connecting these two seems to be going a lot smoother. I haven't missed any rings yet, at least not that I noticed. Trying to keep that flower pattern, uh, V pattern, however you want to, however you perceive it. I got the last one going in here. Just to make sure. All the rings are laying out nice and flat. Yeah, the rubber rings like to stick. They stick, stick, stick. Stick to each other, stick to the aluminum, stick to your table. of a what could be a sheet if you were going real big we ended up a little bit bigger than this guy an extra row so instead of having one slide clasp so this has we're gonna put two smaller ones improvise on the fly there I'm gonna lay that out like that we're basically gonna run three of these rings through those three eyelets and then we're going to leave a gap because if you count these we have actually have seven blue rings we only need six of them so we're going to leave one open in the middle which also allows for a little space for these to open and close when you're putting it on or taking it off also allows for the, the stretchiness Continue your wherever your blue ring, in this case blue ring pattern. Top one goes through two. So we're going through two right there. And we're just gonna go through this one eyelet. The very first one, just like so. Now this is very important that what I was telling you before about overbending your ring when you close it, you want to make sure that your pinch it, your ring is actually pinching itself closed because if you leave any sort of gap, that gap can find its way right to this eyelet and you're going to pop right off of there. So make sure that your ring is closed tight. And next blue ring, you're just going to go down two, just like so, and just continuing with the pattern. But instead of adding the O-rings on the end, you're gonna, you add your clasp. And if you're feeling really adventurous and you want to go big, we do sell these. I'm pretty sure they go up to seven eyelets. But not quite as common as the smaller ones. It can kind of become a little bulky when you're trying to put it on. It's too long, there's too big of a separation. Doesn't want to close right. Just like that. So now, there's a couple ways you can do this. I always leave my clasp 
closed. Makes it a little bit harder to attach it to the other side, but I know that I'm not gonna put it on backwards and have to take it off and put it back on again. So I leave them closed. Just fold this back over, making a circle. I know it looks like a big old pile of rubber and aluminum, but there is method to the madness. Once again, the aluminum is so soft, you almost don't even need pliers, but it makes your bending of the rings a lot more accurate. And you get, like I was talking about before, a nice 90 degree twist. You don't, you don't want to, when you open it, you don't want to do this. That makes your ring a weird shape. Last one, we'll call this project done. There you go. So this is the very same pattern as the one that we're making now. Just threw in some larger rings, medium sized ring, and then all the smaller rings, slightly different material. We've got stainless steel and uh, rubber O-rings again. Mm -hmm.